jeepers! You're listening to Smash or Pass. Welcome back to another Q and A on the JB and Millie channel. I am JB, and with me, of course, is Millie. Hi. And we have Mark Marsh. Hello. <laughs> So today we're kind of going to do like a, a bit of a two in one video. We're going to be talking about kind of our advice or tips and tricks for Scooby-Doo collecting in the UK. But of course, we have the regular Q&A to get on to. So I guess I hope everyone's ready because we always get a variety of interesting ones. So it'll be kind of fun to see what we've got this time. So <laughs> Millie, what is the first amazing question? So it starts off with the start of our collection. And um, does anybody remember what their first Scooby Doo item was? Oh, I guess Mark. Do you know what? Oh, I, I, I want to say Zombie Island because I started with VHS. My most oh, famous yeah. VHS. So it would have been Zombie Island, Alien Invaders, and which is goes for my main three because I got a Cyber Chase on DVD. I never actually owned it on VHS as a kid. Mm. I used to have like a nice VHS collection until. When I went to college, my parents threw away most of the VHS tapes, no. <laughs> so I had to rebuy re most of them. <laughs> That's actually so painful. I feel like a lot of our first ones then will have that kind of ongoing theme of things just getting binned, because I guess mine would have been the Scooby-Doo burger pillow. I'm going to like blow it up on the screen so people can see but that I had as a child, and it was just binned or donated, and then Millie helped me find another one. Mm. So that was, I think, my first ever bit of, like, Scooby-Doo merch. Maybe I had one before, like a DVD or a VHS, but the first one that I remember is the Burger Pillar. What about you? So the first Scooby thing I think I ever had was from my brother. He got me a DVD of Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost, which I do still have. Oh. I have the disc for it, but not the box, so I still have it's it. I, I love all the um bonus episodes they put at the oh, start, or was yeah. it after with VHS? So you get like two episodes, but sometimes I've noticed they were repeat, so you get the same ones on most of them. Yeah, it's really annoying. It's a shame we didn't keep the box because I think then that would have been like. It's the why nice I hate it when they do a movie and they put oh contains bonus episodes, and I swear, what a night for a night! It's probably on majority of all my DVDs. <laughs> Oh. You know what? You're not wrong. You're not <laughs> wrong. I'm just thinking, okay, yes, okay, it's, it's the first episode ever made. We love it. But can you not put it on every DVD, okay? There's more episodes. <laughs> I want to see, like, they rarely put any Be Cool on. And Be Cool's kind of fun, but I don't know. I haven't seen a Guess Who either. Be oh. Cool I love because it's just that humour. Oh. Everybody has their own hijinks to relate to. So I'll watch it and I'll always end up laughing because it actually is funny. Oh, yeah. I like the the bonus features for... I think it's either Happy Halloween... No, it is Happy Halloween, Scooby-Doo, I think. Because then they've actually done, like, three Halloween episodes mm. for that bonus, which I actually appreciate a lot. Yeah, that was good. Okay, if they do so... it around the theme, that'd be better. Mm. <laughs> uh, next question for you is, do you think Scooby-Doo will have a crossover with Looney Tunes in the future? Oh, do you want to answer that first? I think it could possibly be like a few years in the future. I don't think it's something that's coming up. In I the next saw few something, things. and it's not really a crossover, but it's kind of a bit of like a kind of mixed universe thing. I don't know when this was. I swear this was like two, three months ago now. But I saw that they were doing Bugs Bunny, like Looney Tunes X Scooby Doo Funko Pops. So, like, Lola oh, Bunny as yeah. Daphne, um, Fred as, like, you know, Daffy Duck or something. Like, I saw that that's what they were doing, but I haven't heard anything about it since, like, someone just posted a list. It's, it's a weird one, because when you look at Looney Tunes, they're mostly animals speaking, which is far out of the Scooby-Doo's realm. Okay, Scooby speaks, but the rest of the gang aren't going to believe that, especially Velma. I could probably see it maybe with... Sylvester and Twinny, like both mm -hmm. those two being thrown in, where only Scooby and briefly Shaggy can understand them. That could work, but whether it's like it can thrown in, because sometimes the humor with Looney Tunes is way different than it is in Scooby Doo. Well, then again, recently we've had Courage the Cowardly Dog, which had cats on the quack. Mm -hmm. 
That guess, was a good one. Mm, I'll, oh, I guess it's when it's when we want to talk about that. It's like Looney Tunes back in action, where there's that little clip where Shaggy's in there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's one of my favorite. That kind words. of what springs to mind for me. For and that also the Tasmanian work. Devil in Scooby Doo Two. Yeah. So there's been a bit of like we've been teased, <laughs> but we haven't gone all the way. It's one of those but... weird ones where Maybe are we going to get one or not? Day. Yeah, it is. Okay, Fingers so this crossed. next question is one that we get for every q and I want to say, and that is, do you like Greggs? Well, I guess I've answered it. I am... Um, it's GRX. <laughs> GRX, yeah. Oh my... <laughs> I love that. I'm at GRX. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you've seen this, Mark, but recently, if you go into, like, Primark, there's, like, a whole entire Greggs clothing line. I noticed that in my retail shop. I'm just there looking at something, thinking, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> just there with Greg's everything, and I'm like, "Do you get free Greg's if you wear that?" I just not just going to Greg's like fully stacked up. There's like sweatpants, hoodies. So yeah, I would. I I like Greg's. Grx is the goat. Okay, so this next question is a bit of a wordy one, so I might need your help to understand it. Since Trick or Treat Scooby Doo uses the same animation style from Scooby Doo and Guess Who, does that count as the last episode of Scooby Doo and Guess Who, or not? Even though it doesn't feature any guest stars, mm, I guess Mark can possibly have a crack I, at that. I, 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 I want to say it follows in the same timeline, so it's in that same like story arc. If that makes sense, like the previous ones where they use the same an. Anim- like animation so you would know the style was still part of that same timeline mm. so you yeah. know it's still carrying on they might not do a guess but they can still have their big adventure yeah i think it's kind of like you know how we had the what's new era where there was the same style for things like the loch ness monster and things like that with the outfit choices i think it's kind of just significant of that era probably the same timeline i think, think it's just if you want it to be then it is it's like i think samurai sword in the what's new style came out after the last episode of what's new so if you want to consider that the finale of what's new you can if you don't want to then you don't have to so I think it's just, if you want it to be the kind of last hurrah for Guess Who, then it's there, but if you don't, then don't worry about it. And we don't know technically. I'm just annoyed that that season two is not in the UK yet. Oh, don't even get me started. That annoys me. They had that in America in like September, before September. I'm I'm there, I'm thinking, right, do I buy it? And then, because I I know, as soon as I buy it through the US or on eBay, it will come out in the UK. I, well, I, that happened to me before for something. I think it will come out in the UK. <laughs> and in I December, paid so much money because that's the same I, time it's coming out in Canada. So I think we'll I, get it December. I'm deserving. I'm going to hold out. It will come out. It will. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely will. I'm okay. still waiting for them to finish Be Cool Scooby Doo. Please, that was a complete box set. Mm. We had two volumes. And it wasn't even like a complete season. Yeah, I think we had bit. both of them. There was like the blue one and then a purple one. Yeah, volume one and two. Then there was um, part one as well, season one, part one on DVD in the US, which is basically our two volumes put together. But they never did the season two. Hmm. I wonder why. That is strange. I don't like it. One needs to sort themselves out. I hate the ink because it's just like the new Scooby Doo movies. We wait all this time and. We get the almost completed collection with one missing, and I'm like, great. But you're not the weird the thing that annoys me. It's Wednesday is missing, and I had a chance about six, seven years ago to buy that on VHS, but I was like, no, it will come out on DVD. Oh no! I regretted my mistakes. Top tip: if you see something too good to be true, buy it. You see, that's the <laughs> thing, isn't it? Like sometimes, if you hold out then you're going to get rewarded at the end. Other times, yeah. if you hold out, you end up regretting it. So it's kind of like you, you, you kind of screwed it, it, it If I brought in. it, I could have been the one with the complete set. Because mm. I would just show it off, like, regardless. I'd be smug about it. <laughs> and I miss my golden chance. There's someone out there has the complete set, and he's keeping quiet about it. Oh, no. I wish it was me. Maybe <laughs> it was you. Maybe you did it. No, <laughs> not me. Okay, so next question that we got is, if they were to do a live action adaptation of Scooby-Doo meets Batman and Robin, who would you cast for the live action cast and you can't include any previous Batman actors? Oh, Can we get, can we get Matthew Leonard back as Shaggy? Yes! <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Like We can use the past people who played the gang 
just not the past people who the play... gang come out of retirement. Batman. <laughs> yes. Without Batman. Then we need an old Batman. I guess so. George Clooney's already been Batman, hasn't he? I don't know. I'm terrible at knowing actors. Let I me really think like... about old men the for same. A second. Name an old man. <laughs> Steve Martin. It's, it's, it's weird because if it's someone's Batman, I always want them to say that I'm Batman. Like in 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 the in the, in the Batman movie movie that came out uh, last year, I think it was. He goes, "I'm vengeance." I'm thinking, mm. "We know you're vengeance. You're the Dark Knight. You're not going to go out so, yeah. not do vengeance." <laughs> you know, that's uh, the whole the, vengeance is your whole thing. <laughs> it's the source of you know how you started. Your parents died. You want to seek vengeance. You are the knight. <laughs> we get that. Knight. You don't have to tell people I'm vengeance. Every time, dress so as a dramatically bat. as well. But the, okay, if I, I saw would you the coming out anyway, dressed as a bat, I know there's vengeance on your mind. Oh well, always the two thousand two yeah, cast <laughs> Taron Egerton Batman, and he would be the son of Batman or something. He'd be a, a new Batman after hmm. one of them just popped off. I don't know like, something, <laughs> but that would get me pumped up. Oh, kind of like just how they made Blue Falcon a young Blue Falcon, and it was yeah. the dad kind of thing. They the can son. do that again. They can do it. Well, Batman's already got a son, Damien. Oh yeah, so was he Nightwing? No, no, um, that's um, oh god, uh, Jason Todd's Red Hood. Oh my god, I know the name is stuck. At, I... Is it Dick Grayson? Dick Grayson, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> see, I've I've boned up on my DC knowledge, or at least I've tried. <laughs> I'm not a DC person, but I've I bone up real good when I want to. Yeah. Dick became Nightwing, and then Damien started as Robin, but then gradually will take the man to a Batman. Hey. Okay, JB, I'm going to test your knowledge on something else here because I can't say I know the second one. If Johnny Quest and Secret Squirrel starred in a new TV show together or a crossover movie, what will it be about and why? I have no clue who Secret Squirrel no, is. Not... <laughs> I haven't uh... seen Do- Johnny Quest. Huh. So I guess we'll we'll put a pin in that. And I'll say, make Secret Squirrel. Okay, Johnny Quest, okay, get an inventor like Tony Stark, because I know there's like Quest Labs, okay? He tries to invent a way to rule the animal kingdom or to save the animals because of global warming. And he ends up making a Secret Squirrel who's voiced by Anna Kendrick. They then go on miraculous adventures to save the world and and the evil villains of big energy drink. And that's it. That's what it'll be about. I'll write and direct and produce it. I'll watch it. Really? Yeah, I'd watch it. And eventually, the squirrel turns into Anna Kendrick, and she's the star. I'll have of the to movie. watch Johnny Quest, and then I'll be ready for that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, taking a step back to a question we were discussing before with the different eras of Scooby Doo and yeah. the art styles and things like that. What's your favorite favorite era? Be that things like What's New or Guess Who. Oh crap! Maybe Mark can go because I'm I'm Mystery Incorporated is my go-to nice. for Scooby Doo now. It used to be Where Are You, but Mystery Incorporated, I love that series. The continuation, mm. the the dark feel to it, the, the the way it just leaves you in a massive big cliffhanger for season one, knowing that it's been cancelled and then it's revived again, and then you're like, oh yes, yeah, finally get to see what happens. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I was devastated when they cancelled out the first time, thinking, why? You can't leave on a cliffhanger, and then they do season two on a cliffhanger, thinking, that's evil. It is. <laughs> they they do the butterfly effect, and then that's it, you know. They go, um, oh God, who who do they... They speak to some sort of professor that wants them to come meet them, but I think it's the same professor in Happy Halloween, the one that gives them the... Mystery Machine X. Yeah, and that I'm guy, sure. I forgot his name. I did I did the video that's going up today about it, so I should know the name, but I forgot about it. I think the guy that did the Mystery Machine X, I think that was like a Bill Nye cameo. Yeah, because I, I, I want to feel like it's set in like the same like time span. Because it just matches up where they go meet the professor, and then mm. that's where the mystery meant to begin. So it's like an infinity loop of back to where they should be. That's why I think Mystery, Mystery Incorporated ended on them starting their mystery from the beginning. Like, where they set off was their first mystery led to Where Are You? 
Yeah, but see, that's how we always view it as the kind of precursor to it all, which is so interesting considering the fact that you can almost go and look at the Where Are You era and see that maybe with a bit of like touching up, like you can like edit a bit, you almost can imagine them getting to that stage. So I always enjoy it for that reason. Okay, so the next question we have is Are you planning to watch well, you didn't answer that one. Oh, I'm sorry, I probably skipped over it. Um, so I thought I said what's new. I thought I said it before you. I'm gonna say the what's new, but I think maybe that's nostalgia. I didn't say maybe that's nostalgia because I'm nostalgic. <laughs> I was just right. I feel like you know, because like I've always said about what's new being my favorite era. I feel like I just answered that in my head as I was asking the question. Like, oh, Possibly. it has to be that. <laughs> um, so the next question, sorry, was, are you planning to watch Knives Out soon? Since the director of Scoop Holiday Haunt said that it's like Knives Out but for kids. Yeah, well, it's kind of like Halloween-ish. Like, I mean, knives, I don't know. Knives are kind of scary. So definitely for spooky season, I'll give it a go. I've heard good stuff about it, and I don't really mind about spoilers. I just know that who's in it? I think Daniel Craig's in it. So it should be fun. It should be fun. Have you seen Knives Out, Mark? I've not seen that, no. Hmm. Well, knives that Out. Is it on? But What streaming platform is it on? I think I did see it on Netflix, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm gonna sure. have to check that out because mm. I've Knives Out, yeah. Oh, there's a Knives Out too. I think they're making a third one as well. I the trailer may have dropped for the third one. I maybe the the trailer dropped for the second one. See, I'm surprised we've not seen it because we go through stages where we really like watching movies that sound quite like scary and horror. If I had my phone with me, I'd IMDb it, but. <laughs> Is it, it Wait, it's not, not, is it a horror? It's not. I just feel like the title sounds like a horror. I think it's it's. Is it a wacky who done it? I don't know. A zany wacky who done it, starring Daniel Craig and others. Honestly, don't know. Hmm. We'll have to look into that. Oh, I've seen the clip with this. It has Daniel Craig in, but it also has the guy who played Captain America. Oh, Chris Evans. Yes, he's yes. wearing like a sweater, isn't yes, he? Yes, I remember because it was on uh, TikTok where he was just like a psychopath. I did, I did, I'll bet. I might actually want to watch that later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's, do it. let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so this next question for me is like a definite yes. Would you like to see a Scooby Doo and Tom and Jerry crossover? Yes. It's a yes from me. Yes. I feel like it. the two would lend to themselves quite well. I love Tom and Jerry. Okay, I think that would be really good. So, what I'd, it could even be, you know, part of what this next answer, the next question could be as well. So, when is the when do you think the next Scooby Doo series is? I'd quite happy to see a Tom and Tom and a Tom and Jerry Scooby Doo crossover series. That would be Scooby Doo and Tom and Jerry too, or mm-hmm. Scooby Tom and Jerry. They can do it as shorts like they did years ago with the Scooby Doo and Scrappy Doo. Oh, so they can yeah. at least for shorts you you get. You know, you get your episodes, but there'd be like two to three mysteries. Mm. I just wonder what the story is because the Tom and Jerry thing is like they go through shenanigans, but they're like chasing each other. Yeah, because they, they don't speak. That's things. the thing. They got to use yeah. other ways of communicating to go use the entire environment. That. Oh, what I'd like to see which would kind of be funny. It's like you said with the shorts, they could do mystery ink entering a house that they think is haunted but all of the kind of goings on and shenanigans and like the noises they hear it's just from like, them yeah a direct result of them just chasing each other around the house that so you watch the short from tom and jerry's perspective and then you watch it from the yeah. gang's perspective oh that would be great that could, that let's could do that work. let's that do that good. and i guess just kind of elaborate on that question a bit more it says when do we think the next scooby series will be next year it has to be next year yeah. there's there's not know. enough time now in the year to do it do we think it's going to be just another series of Scooby Doo and Guess Who, or do no. we think they're going to have something original? I think they're going to go back to the original roots. So mm. instead of guest stars, they're going to go back to normal mystery solving. Yeah. But hopefully, it might do it like around the world where they just tr- keep traveling, but Ooh. it's a continuation. Well, do we think that the new series of Scooby will be before or after the Velma series premieres? Because they could I be holding off think... to not overlap too much. I think they're going to see Velma has been an independent series. That comes out next year. Yeah. The Velma one, but I suppose to. What about Mystery Pups? When's that? That's like 2024, isn't it? Yeah, that's... that's God, we still got another few years for that. 
<laughs> so the target audience for that movie or for that series may not even be born yet. How cute is do that? Do you think that they will do something new in 2023 when they've got two projects upcoming? Knowing one and no, but then I can't see them not. I can't see them not do it. I know. It's curious. It'll be good to see what does happen. And I guess thoughts on, you know, other new things. The next question is, what's your thoughts on Jellystone? I haven't seen Jellystone, but I want to, because Adele K. Thomas, who we interviewed, worked on a few of the episodes. So I'm curious to check it out. But I have not seen Jellystone yet. No, I've not seen it either. Be I, haven't good heard, to see. I haven't heard of Jellystone. <laughs> <laughs> It's like all different Hanna Barbera. I, I like how I'm, I like how I've fallen behind on everything. <laughs> I feel like throughout COVID, everyone's kind of caught up with everything, and with the world kind of reopening, people have just got so busy that, like you say, falling behind on certain things. Well, it depends though, because COVID cause loads of things back on work, Cartoon I Network. Oh, yeah, of... I think I saw that. Oh. I, I need to get back into watching Cartoon Network because I they just watching did an anniversary it. event a couple of days ago. I think. Oh yeah. Okay, and another kind of TV channel. Next question is: What's your favorite Nickelodeon show? I don't think I've ever watched Nickelodeon. Someone may need to remind me, or maybe do a quick Google of what, because I I never realized. Oh, this is Boomerang. That's Nickelodeon. That's Cartoon Network. Was a child. It was just this is on. Rugrats was part of Nickelodeon. Okay, I like, I like that. Rugrats. So I take Rugrats. Was also SpongeBob. a show called. No, was it Keenan Cow? Keenan Cow was another. It's an old. I feel like Rugrats show. might be the only one I know. The Thornberries, I think. I mean, there's a bloody thingy near us. Well, it used to be near us, like a Nickelodeon world. And what? I saw SpongeBob stuff there. And I like SpongeBob. Was that a Nickelodeon? Because they um, re brought Rugrats back. Did we not a few days ago? Did we not buy something Rugrats? Yes, we did. It was the movie where they go to Paris. Ah. Mm. I feel like Rugrats is the only yeah. thing I've seen, so I'm going to go with that as my favourite. <laughs> if Okay, I need to go Rugrats unless SpongeBob is Nickelodeon. Then probably I don't SpongeBob. think SpongeBob is Nickelodeon. I what about Jimmy was... Neutron? See, I've, I've... Actually, Jimmy Neutron might be. SpongeBob SquarePants is... It, it doesn't really say. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be Rugrats to be safe. Yeah, Rugrats. Yeah. Okay, JB, I'm starting with you for this question. Me? Who's better, Frankenstein or Chickenstein? Chickenstein, because chicken you've got to get that chicken. you got to get the chicken. Like, what's a Frank? Actually, you know, Frank Welker could be a Stein, but a chicken. I mean, I could eat a chicken more than I could eat a Frank. Oh, I'm not going to lie, the clip for Chickenstein looked genuinely a bit terrifying. Oh, I might even include it in the <laughs> yeah. QA, you know. I might just do it. And again, chicken stein. I realize this is in better uh, shape because it's at 24 FPS. Why'd this chicken cross the road? <gasps> to rip off your faces and eat your brains. I'm a little southern fried Scooby. It worked. Oh Bye, guys. And. Why did chicken cross the road? <laughs> to rip off your faces and eat your brains. I want a little southern fried Scooby. Okay. Mark, would you say Frankenstein or Chickenstein? <laughs> Probably Chickenstein because of the name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess another kind of conversation about crossovers. Um, for the next question, it says if Dynamo and Blue Falcon did a crossover with Frankenstein Jr. and the Impossibles, what would it be like and what would it be about? Is Frankenstein Jr. wait? So, a crossover special? between Dynamo, Frankenstein, and what's the other one? The Impossibles, the Impossibles. I think it's Frankenstein Jr. and the Impossibles. I'm not familiar with that. No, neither I'm, am I. I know it's like I'm a Hanna Barbera thing. Though it was like in the end credits of Scoob, they were like creating him somewhere. But no, did, I'm not familiar. Didn't they start off doing Frankenstein first before they did Scooby Doo? I think they may have done a lot of the older things before, like the Scooby era, were like 
kind of the 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 things like Flintstones and stuff, Jetsons and I think Frankenstein Junior may have been there. Or it, it could wasn't just a be long another... lit season. I think it was just for a few episodes. No, yeah. Or it could have just been another Scooby clone, like Goober and the Ghost Chasers or something like that. Mm. But I don't know. I'm going to research. I'm going to get boned up. One day I'm going to be a Hanna-Barbera expert. One thing I will say, though, is I did really enjoy the kind of most recent Blue Falcon Dino in Scooby-Doo. So I'd happily see more of that. But like I said, I don't know about... And there's an episode of Blue Falcon in Guess Who Season 2, which hopefully we're going to get on DVD soon. Mm. We can hope. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so kind of heading back to a question from before again. I know we talked about our favourite era of Scooby, but do we have a favourite version of the characters? I think, again, I'm saying what's new. The what's new, what, the members of the gang? Yeah. Oh, God. I, I like them in the 2002 movie as well. Oh, I like okay, Daphne maybe in the 2002 movie. And then all the others can be from what's new. Yeah, I, I prefer Daphne from the Be Cool era. Because mm. she oh, had yeah. so many different things going on, my favorite one was probably when she she acted like Fred, yeah, for the day. <laughs> it was oh, because Fred's controlling, and then Fred doesn't twig on that it's gonna backfire having two of him. He doesn't like because he can't control him, <laughs> essentially, or the puppets, <laughs> or or Mission Impossible Daphne. Oh, there's just so many like iconic ones. They really people. made sure they had their own little quirks. It wasn't just about Shaggy and Scooby being funny. Because Mystery Incorporated, we had Fred, like, master planner in the Dower Mansion. <laughs> just, that's where my best Fred is. In the Dower Mansion, going all out, doesn't realise Daphne's there, just goes full trap mode. <laughs> just trap in time. <laughs> I think for Shaggy and Scooby, uh, I think they're the same in every single season. Yeah. yeah. They don't they're change that much. Like, even in like the old classic one, even in like Arabian Nights, which is such a different one, they're kind of more or less the same. They just want to get their snacks. They want to make jokes. I guess uh, the what I know as well, most... their eyes, their eyes have changed back to like pupils, just mm. black dots. But uh, uh, earlier season of the movies, they had full eyes. So I don't mm. understand why they go back and forth. <laughs> no, they do it with Daphne as well. Like yeah. sometimes she looks kind of tan, then other times she's like the regular kind of. It's, they kind of fluctuate a lot. Yeah, but Shaggy and Scooby tend to act the same in everything. So mm. and Velma, well, she she changed dramatically. I f- I feel like was it the Return of the Thirteen Ghost movie came out? That's when she started changing into her obsessive about traps and wanted to like change things like okay ghosts aren't real this is mm. what happened I've, I've, I've still said this, she ruined 13 ghosts of scooby-doo for me oh. she ruined it for me but say they, they were all yeah. high on altitude and i think that doesn't even make sense <laughs> but they didn't even need to include that though like if she just said nothing and got on the plane yeah. it would have been not a, like a fantastic ending or conclusion but it would have been like Oh, that's cool. We can we can leave that. That's amazing. That's Velma just thought. wasn't all right at that time. Like after the, with the return to Zombie Island as well. Like she just seemed to be going through it in those two. Velma movies. was Karen at that point. Yeah, <laughs> determined to ruin everything. Yeah. Actually, that's so funny. Recently, Velma was called a Karen because in the multiverse <laughs> game, she'd like threatened to call the police or something. In a multiverse game, I love using Shaggy <laughs> because he's he, it's ridiculous. His jump kicks. That's all I do. I do the jump kicks and it knocks people flying. Shaggy's OP. <laughs> oh, I want to play it. I need to, because the only game console we've got is the Switch. So it's on I the Switch. It is it? Yeah, it's on the Switch. Yeah. It's on Xbox, oh. PS4, and it's on Switch. My oh. life has been a lie. <laughs> Okay, so the next question is oh, sorry, I don't think you said about Fred. Did we say Fred? Your ad- favorite adaptation for Fred? What yeah, Dave um, Elza? My- Mystery Incorporated, I said. Yes, you did. So Because of his trap obsession. <laughs> uh, okay, so the next question was um, when did you first get introduced to Scooby Doo and Hanna Barbera? Shall we all do Scooby first and then perhaps we've got a separate story yeah. for Hanna Barbera in general? So. I don't know who wants to go first. Maybe Millie. 
I guess Scooby would have been when I was like seven or eight, just coming home from school and watching Boomerang. And I guess I never knew anything about studios or anything like that. So I guess I'd never have known who was making what product. It was literally just that's Scooby Doo, not that's like a Hanna Barbera show. So okay, so I'm uh, mine with Scooby. I think it was watching the 2002 movie for the first time. And it, it changed the trajectory of my being. I didn't know what path I was on until I saw that. And then I was forever changed. It touched me on the inside. And it touched me on the outside. It touched me here, 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 here. And that's it. Hannah Barbera, I think, is a weird story. I think I used to get drugged up a lot. Like, whenever I, I was teething, my mum would just, like, because I'd be, I'd be crying, she would, like, take me to the upstairs room, and I'm sure she'd, like, give me whiskey to, like, numb the pain. And while she was giving me whiskey, there was, like, wacky races that were always on. So I think it would have been there, so... I don't know, it's a, it's a weird story. <laughs> My experience, I still remember, it was the Scooby-Doo Marathon in the late 90s, so I think I was about five or six, and oh. I used to love it. Every to- every six weeks, when you're off on the holidays, Scooby-Doo back-to-back for 12 hours each day. I used to be glued to the screen watching that. <laughs> so when people when people ask me, like, oh, you... Probably what who Scooby Doo is my main first season. It's not. It's where are you for Scooby Doo mm. and Scrappy Doo show? So I've seen yeah. all of them, even though they're like years before I was even born. I grew up watching them as the basis. Yeah, see that is weird because I have like a similar thing with the Scooby Doo show because obviously watching was always on, but I think I ended up seeing more of like the Scooby Doo show than a lot of the more like then shows yeah so it's kind of showing the power we knew it as the scooby-doo show everyone else knew it as their syndication shows so when it came to collecting i always just thought i can't find the scooby-doo show it wasn't until college when i found out i was scooby-doo show was actually syndications of three different shows because there was the laugh olympics all stars and then the laugh olympic all stars um season two which was split differently so it is so confusing going through the DVDs though. Like when they consider there's like a third season of Where Are You, but it's actually like season three of the Scooby Doo show. And yeah. Then, ooh, I can't even. Well, it's the first half of the third season of the Scooby Doo show because the Scooby Doo All Stars Laugh Olympics is the remaining one. So season one of the Scooby Doo show is obviously the crossover between Scooby Doo and Dynamo Hour. Season two is a Scooby Doo All Stars block, mm. and then the third one is the Scooby Doo Where Are You season three, and Scooby Doo All Stars Laugh Olympics. I think that's another <laughs> show that they didn't fully release on DVD. No, they only did the volume parts for um, Laugh Olympics. Volume one. And volume I love this. one, and I want to watch this two. soon. Oh, just nostalgia. Yeah, I don't know why I pulled it out. I'm I used nostalgia. to, I used to get loads of volume from the range. Because the range, the range, yeah, the range to the kids section for DVDs, and oh, th- literally there was Tom and Jerry, Flintstones, and Scooby Doo, and I just started it from there. Oh wow! I need to check <laughs> the range. Oh gosh, Every it's day a weird one because you don't you don't think the range, but I went and have it. They do DVDs back then. I'd always just go <laughs> either Woolworths or probably W H Smith. Like, mm. but the range, I'd never would have thought about that. I didn't even know what the range was till like two years ago. Really? Yeah, because where I'm from, such a small place, I just never heard. Oh, are you not? Oh gosh. <laughs> no, I love the range. It's like it's my happy place. <laughs> okay, so the next question we have is: Have you heard anything about episode two of Mystery Incorporated? What? Like anything in general? Like? Uh, it just says anything about Mystery Incorporated. I guess this is on its Instagram that they've started recording episode two. Oh, yeah. I keep up with it. I keep up with it. And they posted yesterday some oh. promotion for episode one. Like they did like a reel of the cast, like kind of looking as the cast does, saying, Hey, gang, like, you know, episode one's out now on YouTube, you know. So I think maybe that was like a Halloween thing. They were like promoting it, doing that extra push for spooky season. But it's showing that the cast and crew are still very much active. And I don't know when they're going to start filming. I know they shared the script for, like, the first page of the script for episode two. 
I'm sure when they did that post, they said that they'd been recording it. I th- you maybe I'll include the post in the screen. I want to get a few of the cast members on the show at some point though, because we've got we've had Dade Elza, who's awesome, but I'm gonna see if I can get everyone on eventually. So Nick, we'll see for for a fan made like Scooby Doo show. Mm. Mm. They pulled it off. Episode one, I loved. It was Episode one, they they killed it. They did they did it right how it should be. And I feel like Warner Bros should take notice. I'm like, right, this is how you do a an actual live action show, not like Daphne and Velma movie that we got. <laughs> where I I still stop for saying, okay, if the budget was there and they had better cast, it could have been pulled off. But then then you see this show with Mystery Incorporated budget of people coming together pretty much no budget at all 100 times more better i'm sure in the last q a we got asked what our least favorite scooby pro like adaptation was and i said daphne i mean i don't and think velma. daphne and velma is my least favorite but it's when it, it's, it's ridiculous like literally a fight scene is a close-up of velma and she's just there doing that and that's like the big <laughs> finale <laughs> oh god I my least like favorite was... is has to be returned to Zombie Island. I hate that movie. Because <laughs> Zombie Island was my childhood. Yeah, mine too. I refused That's the to basis. watch That was the Zombie first Island. movie I saw and I loved it. I must have, I've must i seen it so many times. I don't need, need to watch it anymore for a review. <laughs> when I did my review, I didn't have to watch it. I just knew every scene by scene. Yeah. Even the like, music I, is just so iconic. Like They got that right. They, they did. really did. I don't know where I'd be without... The kind of spookier things that we used to watch as kids. Like, if I was a kid growing up now, with the kind of movies that they have, Mm. I don't know. I don't know what I'd do. You have to be a bit scared, don't you? I mean, I guess getting your opinion on some villains, who do you think is the most popular? This this is the next question. Headless Horseman or Green Ghost? Oh, no. Headless Horseman. Mm. Mm. Because that that features um, Scooby Dumbin for his second appearance. Oh, I love Scooby Dumb. I feel like when you they say didn't bring him back. I knew who they meant. It's sad. They brought back Scrappy of the reference, but not Scooby Dumb. Yeah, I don't like that. And they had even like a little mini series of like Yabadoo and, yeah. and like Sheriff Shaggy or something. No, I don't know who the Green <clears> Ghost <throat> is because I've seen people refer to the Phantom Shadow as the Green Ghost, but then I always just call him the Phantom Shadow. So I don't know yeah. if the Phantom Shadow is the Green and Ghost. And Night of or... Fright is no delight. Probably my best episode. Mm. I like that. that. Is they? It's like a mini horror. You used to scare the shit out of me as a kid. I, <laughs> I, 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 I had nightmares from it. <laughs> oh, that whole series just used to scare me. For some, that's why I was so attached to the Scooby Doo show because I was. I must have been like such a weak kid because the second that I heard that, like, even the score, like all the sounds things, even, even when it would go. Or the kind of like that kind of noise, it just used to scare me, and I don't know why. So I was like, No, it's that creepy Batman noise when they're walking as well. You're just like, Oh, great, because you just knew there's that something gonna go down. Bad mojo, (laughs) guys. The next question we have, we did answer the headless horse. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got got horses. The next one is we're heading into the anonymous section. Oh, no. Is this NSFW? And the first anonymous question is, what's the biggest red flags in a guy? JV. <laughs> when they prefer Velma to Daphne. You know, no, 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 no. Um, probably... When they like Scrappy-Doo. Ooh. Leave. <laughs> Who's your favourite Scooby-Doo character? Oh, the main, the main dog, Scrappy. Ooh. Leave. <laughs> when they... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What's a red flag? Is that like <laughs> is that like a, a pet hate? Is that when you a red you... flag's like a okay, that's a no, like leave while you still can. Oh, or maybe when they have their eyes set on multiple other other uh, men or women. I don't know. <laughs> if they prefer Velma, I don't know. I don't know. I liked your Velma one. It was quite funny. What about yours? Because you're well, uh, you like guys, don't you? Uh, I feel like you gave some good answers. What's your red flag? Oh, I'll let you say. Um, it's hard for a man to do it because it's mostly a woman who has to like say the red flag because we'll yeah. probably say one thing and it's like, that's not the red flag. Oh, oh but I'll, I'll have something on my mind, but then I know that I do it, so I don't want to say it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally, I was trying to make this funny and be like, okay, so what does JB do that I can say that'll make me a bit like, no. 
What, simpy? Yeah, been a simp for Daphne JP. I'm not a simp for Daphne. That's just sorry. slander. Okay, next question is one we can all answer. How many stuffed animals do you own? 28. <laughs> That's <laughs> Straight to the point. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to think about it. None of that cone know? head. Like, you know what? I actually okay. Here's my here's my promise <laughs> to the viewers. I will hand on heart go throughout this house after this is re- after this is done, or at some point between this is being recorded and it's being released, and I will count every single one and I'll put that number on the screen. I'm not kidding. It's just the way you said it. 28. So um, far. It was 28. I think it's more like 38. 38? Yeah. Oh, God. Head off. I have. Away. So, does a pup hand puppet count? Yeah, why not? <laughs> I've I got a Scooby-Doo hand puppet. <gasps> oh, my God. That's so cute. I can't put my hand in there anymore because it's really big. But, That's yeah. actually adorable. Oh, that is adorable. <laughs> oh. so that counts as one <laughs> i got um two pokemon ones plus the big dog behind me and it should be on screen i got like um claptrap from borderlands mm. <laughs> i like it i like it oh, oh gosh I, I i used to have loads um few years back sonic tails oh. and I think I got rid of them and I can't find them, so I'm I'm gonna be recollecting them again. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I had a load of like those from like an arcade machine. I actually had loads from arcade machines, like the bananas brand. And I don't know. So I, I, I did them. Diddy Kong as well at one stage. Oh, did he? Oh, they always do like such nice Nintendo plushies in yeah. game. Like they always have like a massive stack of them. Animal but Crossing. they're always so expensive as well. You have like a Bowser and it's like 40 quid. I like going to game where they have the big kind of oh, metal cages of them. Yeah, no, that they had in oh. the game in Southampton, they have the big 13 inch plush of um, Pokemon, like the starters, like Pikachu, oh, yeah. Charmander, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and mm-hmm. there's an Eevee. Eevee. 40 quid. Eevee is my favorite Pokemon. I got to be the forms. big like 40 pound Eevee. Was it forty pounds? Yeah. Yeah, it's not cheap. I thought it was like they started 20. doing Pokemon as pop vinyls now, and I want I, I want to start collecting them for a series, trying to get all one hundred and fifty one. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. I figured I could do this, and then they was like, "You do realize there's loads." And I'm thinking, "Is this hundred and fifty one? Loads." And I just realized there's glow in the dark versions. There's limited edition ones. Diamond There's these collection. diamond ones. Yeah, I, I was like, what the hell the diamond one? <laughs> we have some of the, like, one of the diamond ones, too. Maybe? Yeah. Well, I was so, like, shocked, because I'm sure this isn't coming to the UK, but then I can't imagine it not. In, like, America, someone took a picture in a Walmart, and there's, like, those long boxes, and it has Evie. Vaporeon, Jolteon, Flareon, and I think another Revolution. That would be sick. And if I saw that, I think I'd have to steal it. Because it's just such a cool thing. Like, why are they just releasing like, the coolest thing? It's just crazy. <laughs> but I want to collect them. you got to catch them all. You catch them. Okay, the next one of the anonymous questions is your celebrity crush, JB. Why am I going first? Because I said JB. <laughs> what? What is it like if I have more? I'm, I'm buying everyone else time, like okay. <laughs> putting you on the spot. So I think it would have to be Sarah Michelle Gellar now because she changed my life. When I first saw Scooby Doo 2002, I was I was a moved man. So that's me. You do yours now. I don't have one, JB. Because I've been perfectly transparent. I don't have one. You do. I, I'm no. try. I'm trying to think of one. Oh, Danny DeVito. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Or Ryan think... Reynolds. <laughs> that is a to good be one. Fair, to be fair. <laughs> yes, I I can agree with that. I'm pretty sure I was asked at work about that actually. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds. What Ryan Reynolds or Ryan Gosling? No. There's Definitely that Ryan there's that Reynolds. TikTok um video where a woman's like, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Ryan Reynolds? 
And he just she skips through and there's all these pictures of Ryan Reynolds on his laptop. Don't go for it. <laughs> And then the, the dad, screensaver. The dad comes over and goes, What, is that Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> One of these days I'm going to do reactions to TikToks. That'll be good content. <laughs> Hashtag quality content. <laughs> do you think you would ever get tired of doing interviews? No. Well, well, I have been. You're always getting like slumps, don't you? Like whenever you feel like you're not gonna get enough, or that you messed up the questions, or that but, you're just gonna run out. Well, no, that's not getting tired of it. When it when it does stop, well, when I get tired of it, there'll probably not be any more. But I don't see it happening because everyone you talk to, like, okay, we recently did speak to Joe Sicta, right? Awesome guy, he blew my mind, and that was episode like fifty three. So if you can still get your mind blown at episode 53, it means that you can still get your mind blown in like episode 100, episode 300. So as long as people keep blowing my mind, then my mind is ready to be blown. <laughs> yeah, I'd agree. Uh, that Joe Sector interview was amazing. It was so much fun. And when just to it? see the book and everything. Was that like, recent? That feels recent. Like, it, 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 uh, was, it was like almost two hours. <laughs> but, oh, it, yeah. but it didn't feel like it. No, no. I believe it. I, I really it wanted him to like, interview. have to see if we can get copies of that book. Just him to like scan them all in and send you a copy. Yeah. Oh, oh could you imagine that it though? All so like cool. pressed in a book and then signed at the front. <laughs> that would be like my Christmas wish. If I found out that I was ill tomorrow, I'd go. Okay, please. I beg you, <laughs> let me be satisfied. Do you have a dream person that you would like to interview? Oh, that's an interesting Ooh. one for Mark. Either yeah. one that we've done before, or a new person, because there's so many Scooby people. There's so many. I, I, probably the dream one I would love to interview is Matthew Leonard. Mm. I would love to have a chance to just sit down, chat to him about all his success, because he's still in like even before Scooby he was in Hackers, and I want to ask about that role because the the way it was design back then like old school like special effects it's something you don't get to see often in films that ask people about it all done in the green room so i would love to have a chance to actually sit down and chat to him because that, that could be a long video because yeah. he's worked on loads he's still he's still doing stuff today he's doing he, he was well he had a voice part i think in the new scream but I think they're going to bring him back for like a future screen movie. Like they have to or something. Yeah. And he, then what? He was in that Addison Ray movie. Because they never confirmed his death in screen. He just and had a TV. I think they were going to have his him, head. There's like a curiosity with that where they were going to bring him back for um, Scream 2. And the kind of reveal was going to be that he has been like orchestrating kind of like a load of deaths in the school from his prison cell because he just got sent to prison. But because like a certain tragedy happened in America, they were like, no, we can't do that. Let's change it or something like that. So they were going to bring him back, but then I think they changed it. So they should bring him back again. I'd love to see it. And they were setting it up in the new screen, I feel. Like at the start, she mentions Billy Loomis as the killer and then misses out Stu, um, Lillard's character. And she was kind of done in at the start because she forgot about Lillard's character. And so I think it would have been cool at the end to like, it's like, oh, don't remember, like, don't forget the accomplice. And they could have revealed him and that would have been amazing. But they it's... didn't. We had Jack Quaid, who was still they, cool. They killed Dewey. I was heartbroken when that happened. Oh, look, someone just stabbed me in my heart. Like, oh, he completes it. Did you cry? You, you can't kill Dewey. We're watching I, I, I really hope they we're resurrect the him. Like, he's not dead, but mm. he's on, like, life support. Because he's, he's known that the whole gimmick of him is, like, he gets wounded and stabbed, but he survives. Yeah, okay, his body's messed up and he's not the same man he was poor, but he's still alive and kicking. And oh, then they just kill him off and be like, nah, he he can't be dead. I hope they somehow bring him back. Like, oh, he's still alive, he's just in a coma. Mm, that would be fun. They'll need to as well, because I don't think anyone else is going to like return from that era. So maybe. Or even just some cool flashbacks for now would be cool. Mm. 
Hey, so I guess we're bringing the question back to you, JB. Do you have a dream interview guest? Oh, I really want to interview Victor Cook, who was the, the director on like every episode of Mystery Incorporated, because not only did he do that, but he also directed like every episode of Spectacular Spider Man and did like loads of episodes of the Lilo and Stitch show. So I think for me, there would be like so much that I just oh, want to I talk about. I forgot about Lilo and Stitch. Oh, I was re watching it recently. On, like, Didn't Disney they start Blood. with a movie before the show? Yeah, so they had a, mo- a, a main movie, a TV show movie that led into the show, and then a sequel to the original. Yeah, cause, so many. Yeah, because they did a in the one one normally is a show, show movie or a movie. They did a movie, show movie, show, and then the Lilo and Stitch three that was meant to be a sequel to one, two, and the TV movie was also the finale of the series as well. So they got a kind of muddled, but. Well, it was like Hey Arnold when they came back to the movie to resolve the cliffhanger in the in the in the final, because Arnold goes to find his parents, and then that's it. The show ends. Or like the in between. And then they did the Hey Arnold movie, which carries on from now. I'm like, we waited all this time for this ending. <laughs> I want to see that. I want to see all of these things. I I always appreciate it when they have like a conclusion movie. Because even if it's not that great, it just feels like they well, always like Ed, 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 the budget Eddie. and stuff. They did the same. Oh, I need to rewatch that. But again. but they did but they did the movie. Um, I forgot now. Mm. What was the title? It's called it's called Big Something. Dun, 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 dun. Um, they finally meet Eddie's brother, and we actually see him. So he's not just a name that everyone's terrified of. Because they pulled, they pulled the biggest scam ever, which goes wrong, like really wrong. The fact they had to run and go to his brothers for protection. <laughs> I do want to watch. There's so many movies. There's like a whole list of movies that I, I like shows from nostalgia that I just I want to go back and find either on DVD or iTunes because that's just oh I I want to relive a lot. But Millie, what is your like dream interview of all time? I think it'd be great, Delisle. Daphne really? was always my favourite, and she's just always been, like, the Daphne while I was growing up. Oh, God, yeah. That would be good. But then if she did the voice, I think I'd be a bit confused. I'd, I'd be perplexed. <laughs> right. The last question we got asked, it was one of the anonymous ones, is if you have a worst enemy, who is it? A worst enemy? JB, you're mine. What, like, my name and Emma? Ooh, my name and Emma. Just my an name and Emma. Um, I used to. I don't anymore. <laughs> do I have a worst enemy? No, I do myself. Oh no! Because sometimes you can get in your bad headspace, but then it's always good to just put on like an episode of Be Cool Scooby Doo, drink an energy drink, and just get pumped up. Like that's my main thing. As long as you can get pumped up, like. You can accomplish anything. Like even if you're in the worst mood possible, just think, how do I get pumped up? And the second you do that, then then you're good. So I think it's myself, but I know how to pump myself up enough to like escape from from the bad mind space. All right, wait. So you you said that I'm yours. Yeah. What about what about Mark? Is there like a reverse <laughs> Mark somewhere? There probably is. There, there is one person on YouTube that my mate David sent me. He goes, this guy kind of looks like you. And he, he does look like me if I wore the same glasses as him. Uh, that is weird that you have someone that really looks the same as you. So I'll say, my duplicate is my nemesis. Ooh. How dare you? <laughs> it's like an evil Stealing crime. your identity. Oh, no. <laughs> but he's the good one. I'm the evil one. <laughs> <laughs> Plot twist. There's someone that looks like me, actually. It's mad. Um, okay. So, I guess those are the questions. Boom. Boom. 